do first off you have to unscrew the front of the detector okay that's down there and then you pull the uh, the display out gently and of course this is the wiring and when you're first doing it it's not in there but you pull the plug out for the wiring and it says the different functions negative signal and positive the yellow and green is the negative the number one is the signal wire and the number two is the positive wire so just wire them back in and there are actually numbers on the wire that tells you what which one is which so you put them in then you can just plug the plug the jack back in and feed the wire up through the the top of the cabinet over to the side and then you can just gently put the display back in the gas detector wiring comes down here this nice 18 gauge wire comes up here to this set of terminals and it gets wired exactly the same as the gas detector where there is a sensor wire which is the number one positive wire which is the number two and the green and white wire which is a negative wire or a ground wire um, the wires should be tinned before you install them don't just install stranded wiring without tinning them it, they work a lot better that way the power supply is three wires 120 volts, 18 gauge wire, tin ends, uh, with of course, you know, ground and common and uh, positive. And then you press the up, yes, and the enter buttons to go into the configuration menu. And then you hit the yes, then it goes to alarm one, which is at 10%. Okay, that's good. Supposed to be on increase. It's on N D E N, and it stays on that. It doesn't get changed to the N E N. This goes to self reset with the up yes button. One second, zero seconds. The alarm two goes to fifty percent. That's correct. Increase. That stays at NDEN, latch. Oh no, this gets changed to self-reset also. And then everything else stays the same. And that's it. Save it, yes. Configuration saved. And screw the front back. This is the wiring for the Beacon 110 to go to the GSM-12. We run a jumper from the, the common terminal to the normally open terminal, or C to NO. That's a jumper wire. And then the black and red wires go to the Alarm 1, to the C and the NO terminals of the Alarm 1. And then the clear and the green wires go to the NO of the fail, right that way. Let's see if I can get that in there right. So it goes to the NO of the fail, and it goes to the C terminal of alarm two. So the final result is thusly, and then you turn the power on and wait for it to warm up. So press the up, yes, and the enter button to enter configuration. Okay, enter config, yes. Alarm one, set at 10%, enter to the next level, increase, enter to the next level, N-D-E-N, -E and you want to change that to N-E-N. -E then the next level, latch. Latch is yes. 
strobe is none. One second delay, 50% alarm level. Then go to alarm two. Same increase, NDN, go to NEN, latch. Strobe, you want to go to can reset. Right. And then one second delay, supply level 2%, filter is 5, calibration time 15 minutes, save it, yes. And that configuration is saved. From the alarm blocks on the, be on the Beacon 110, the wires come up here to the GSM-12. <coughs> the green wire goes on terminal 19. The clear wire goes on terminal 5. The red wire goes on terminal 18. And the black wire goes on terminal 4. If I can get it in there. Not super clear. And it's done. So to connect the strobe, take the, the red and the black wires and you hook it up to the strobe connector in the top of the Beacon 110 box. Red to positive and black to negative. I'll zip tie the wire to the, uh, to the sides of the box. To wire up the strobe, first you have to unscrew it, of course. And then it's hooked over the top. The wire from the beacon goes to the middle two terminals of the strobe and then you have to jump to the outer two terminals to get the, uh, the buzzer alarm to sound. The middle two terminals will only make the light flash and the outer two make the, uh, the alarm go and sound. 